So I'm not sure many of you here in this room know we just launched the mask, which is a, probably the first of its kind in the world. Essentially, it's an energy exchange by a demo, like the video. So today is my number of to just go over some of the nuances and uh, how we've been involved with the part of Germany. And as we know, and love and passion we share for us by a demo, all of us, uh, what is meant to be all of us since uh, the start of season. So before I begin, I'm not sure uh, many of you have seen or experienced any virtual reality. Anybody? You see this at Emma's before. So this is just a, a, a list of two things that we have done specifically from Emma's uh, cinema. Uh, I'm not sure many of you know, we have has been active in digital media space in the 90s. Uh, pretty much convinced in Hollywood from bringing this film from the analog to digital with a lot of technology standards, policy, copyright, uh, digital rights management, content and access, uh, the technology that has been developed in the of first uh, city uh, that allows to consume moving images of the media that we see today. So this is the long term we have. So back in 2016, when there was a technology and the content creators used to create, to create a new format. So this is all the project that we have done in collaboration with the content creators. Uh, we did a done project with uh, Warner Brothers, the purpose of a knowledge for the Jerry project. Then we were coming over, which I have published to direct in global in Brazil. Then the Spider-Man Homecoming, Far From Home, uh, that was the Sony picture. And also Spider-Man Far From Home, virtual reality, uh, or 5G. So the world's first multiplayer virtual reality experience, uh, kind of like a gaming that was uh, Launched at the Congress in 2019. Uh, that also rendered Dragon with many studios. Then Greece, uh, one of my uh, exceptionally done project, we captured more than 5 million pixels in 3 and a half minutes. So this is a massive, massive amount of data that I generate. So what that means is whatever next sees, they capture it. So you can become part of any character in that iconic Be the One I Want song and experience from that point of view. Rebangia was uh, another project that was involved in Brazil where we brought Chicken Wine and Pinawa to Christ. And uh, we taught, uh, we did a lot of boot camps in uh, Rio de Janeiro. And the industry co created that in less than one thousand dollars. So, yes, you see a lot of big names here. But this is the democratization of technology and access, affordable access for content creator. I see a lot of young students here in this uh, auditorium. So, this is something to inspire that is done less than $1,000 and yes, it was taken to Kansiksa uh, for a martial film uh, for Kansiksa Festival. Then the first man, that's uh, probably you might have heard yesterday, Kansiksa launched first time in his mission, uh, that is also been broadcasted live in virtual reality uh, by some of my friends. And first man was a project we did with uh, Universal Picture uh, a few years back, and that gives you the first person's uh, perspective on how to land on the moon as if you're being launched on. This is a biopic uh, of Neil Armstrong, directed by Daniel Sheldon. But this is not part of a movie, but this was derived and derived from a movie uh, that we collaborated with uh, Mr. Fisher to then create that. And that actually uh, not started the Elon Musk. Back in 2016, the monster uh, decided to we need to collaborate and create something we know have been done before. I mean, you know, he's a grand, uh, larger than life physician. But uh, Campbell is also very pioneer of a lot of technologies. And uh, this idea of Lemos came from his wife, uh, Sarah, who is a ardent fan of a lot of science. So they are most science and which is very special nose uh, to distinguish uh, between different uh, aromas. So we wanted, we wanted to create something with uh, olfactory on the aroma part of the story. And it's not a cliche, the story requires it. And over the period of a few slides, I'm going to uh, share that. So the last, then I sent out a song that was taken to watch the film, uh, part of Country Festival last year. And this summer, we premiered the last uh, full movie, which is a 38 minute, uh, uh, minute movie in a special motion board that we created. So all of these projects just won many laurels and uh, many actors around the world. His latest project is a first, it's his directorial debut, a 37-minute film called Le Musk. And of course, 
It is groundbreaking, a 4D film combining smells and interactive seating. It's being played at the Cannes Film Festival in France. Have a look at this. Thank you. 
or you can help someone. Yeah. And that's why we feel very, very proud of uh, working this. But you as a filmmaker, I'm pretty sure there are all filmmakers in the room. What is the difference between the movie filmmaking and the uh, uh, like filmmaking? So first of all, you have to unlearn a lot of things which you are learning to do side in order to come to the world of immersive cinema or to the idea of even like a metaverse. And most specifically, this is because I can't hear you are there. So there is an actually wall. That is what we call a fourth wall. We are in some of like in traditional cinema. In virtual reality, there is no fourth wall. If you see camera, camera sees you. So this you are watching from the character's perspective. So if you are attending concert, somebody is playing cello or like a piano, you can be part of stage and watch that concert right from the stage. And that has not been achieved in the storytelling before. So when you are combining those aspects with the uh, narrative storytelling, especially cinema, is a very, very important to kind of uh, unlearn all of things you have learned in the tradition of filmmaking and learn this uh, new era of uh, immersive storytelling where your storyboard needs to be like a completely collateral. Then how you are writing the uh, scripting, how you are going to do uh, like your screenplay, how you are going to like train your actors, actress, uh, the acting coach also needs to know a lot of this thing. And then of course, there's a the technology pipeline, how you are going to take all the images and the stitch it, process it, and every screen is a CD uh, VFX screen. So close to half a million frames are rendered for this one. And uh, as I mentioned, petabytes of data, every single frame requires like a meticulous correction, uh, then the artifact reduction, and that's where the law of computing power has been used. More than 10 VFX sources around the world work on this project, and uh, that's where like a power of computing and data center comes to uh, help creators like Ayahema to drive this story forward. So that's uh, what I tell. And this is a really bold attempt into this one. So I just want to show you some of the clips of picture that we have done. We just launched this one a uh, week before in Los Angeles, uh, Eric and I, it was done with the Infinite Festival of Hollywood, uh, which had start in five years back. And our vision for that is actually, uh, it's a Silicon Valley based to Hollywood, because you cannot just think like a traditional filmmaker, not that the community can think, we are just the technologies, whatever we can provide it. Best to come out of it. It's a marriage between Silicon Valley and Hollywood. Or Hollywood is what we have created together. And what you are seeing, the Lemus, is the finest example which is leading the world cinema in this uh, foray into this uh, new format. So, this one is a picture from uh, a company called the Lighthouse Immersive. They did the uh, Bangalore experience, Pira Gallo, and many. Uh, and this is a production mapping. When you look at all the resolution, it's close to 20k resolution. That's what we have done. This is from the Toronto uh, with the Malala Entertainment, uh, the distributor, this was launched just uh, two days back actually. So I just uh, got this picture last night, this time I just it. So this is how it was done. It's Also, the launch done by a friend's company also live. 
So there are several of this format and uh, again, we just need to kind of like a real of it and reinvent ourselves each and every day. We cannot just specialize on this artificial intelligence there. There's a lot of uncertainty like how it can be used, what is the responsible use of technology. I think, uh, again, like I'm not expert into like a cinema distribution, but this is an attempt to constantly reinvent ourselves. Really. Uh, I'm Shashi from ATV. Uh, generally, the talks are there for this virtual reality. Suppose in Minecraft, when a child uses a goes to the aircraft and then he gets land down, uh, totally different emotional setup is there in his mind. It gives a very, very totally different, I mean, hormonal imbalance because he's in the sky, suddenly coming to the earth. While making all these kind of movies has a, has this particular human aspect. I mean. The physical aspect has been taken into consideration, taking into the different age groups or the different socio-economic groups when they watch the movie. Uh, does it have any bad impact on the mindset if it been seen continually uh, by this sort of uh, great creative making system? That makes sense. So when the traditional cinema, it's it, it every time immersive is very powerful. There is no such thing like a, when the transition happens from black and white to color or even the black and white to audio, that is it. So now we are exploring like in various layers of senses. And that is why I mentioned in my presentation, it has to be used very sensibly to be in humanity and touch. I mean, uh, Iman talks of quite a bit about this in fact yesterday, but yesterday, uh, you know, and uh, he talked about to him, when somebody comes to him and says, like, I mean, the movie saved my life, he gets a lot of pride, it's a much more award than any award that he has already received. So uh, with this comes a responsibility, and that is why. We were very proud to kind of associate because those are the things, the nicest side of humanity is what we have explored and experienced in this one. And that, at least personally, that is my time. I never, I will never talk about moving in this one. Uh, another thing, when you mentioned about the gravity, uh, there is a movie, uh, first man that I co produced with uh, Innocent Picture. It literally you feel like it's your gravity when you're going into the space and lighting on the moon. So check it out, we've done it like a few, four years back. So this is a very iconic moment in history. You cannot relate, especially in American you know, American experience, they don't even relate. When you sit in this motion chair, then you actually feel what must have felt at the Neil Armstrong going on to the moon. So that's... Good morning, sir. Firstly, I would like to say that presentation was really commendable. And secondly, I want to ask, how can we make virtual reality available for masses? Because masses will be more than this. You know, like a Google Cardboard and those technologies are used. And by the way, if you, I don't know whether you noticed, we don't call this a virtual reality movie. We call it as a cinematic sensory experience. Because we kind of like, you know, broaden our horizon so that we don't knock ourselves into this VR, MR, XR, or even metaverse. So, but, uh, the way to kind of like an actual scale, uh, one example I've done about that was uh, in the Times and Life, uh, Times, I think. And they put it to many uh, people who just go and call it, you can have a cell phone and can watch it. But for certain format like the Lemas, especially when you want to preserve and give something user that has never been explained before, we have to take a very careful consideration about how we want to set a standard. Because there is no such standard right now when it comes to this kind of cinema. So, and again, like, we are not a traditional company, but, you know, working with the uh, Rahman and the creators like him, it gives us immense pride to kind of like explore those new frontier, our horizon, and push ourselves with the boundaries together. So it's a tech which uh, story with tech, not the other way around. So, again, the scale will happen, the coming up still happen, and uh, I mentioned the first movie that was distributed, so just, it, it takes it on that. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would like to ask that, um, as you mentioned that 3D, uh, 3D experience, often in uh, 3D experience, often people have a nauseating experience or they get dizzy. So how would you ensure such things won't happen in your case? Sure. So the parent has to be like that kind of a piece in this game. And how do I, I mean, I've been watching VR for a long time. Uh, we always used to do a few things uh, from our lab days. But 2015, 2016, I started watching really putting the headset. Uh, I remember there's a project I watched for the, I think the test pipe in New York. So where uh, you get in the headset and basically camera moves you, move, there's a lot of camera movement. So then when it goes up and down, all of a sudden within like in a 10 seconds I started getting dizzy. 
and then on top of it has tried like you know there was like a cowboy dress which is on a horse like it was a bicycle you see on that one it rides like a horse so the camera was continuously moving and then literally within like 30 seconds i just took those glasses and put it on and i started finding the best part of it it literally i said i will never gonna put this one again in my life so but sometimes something happened in my mind it's like there's a this point of potential and uh, that time uh, it this was around 2016 we are on the law we a part of uh, advanced medical society we started something called we are society in hollywood so this was at the paramount picture law and there's a lot of hungry demos were scheduled. And uh, then there were at least like 10 to 15 uh, this motion picture companies in the business. But mostly they were like a gaming specific, Star Wars kind of like extreme specific, but not like a narrative storytelling. So this company called Polytron, uh, I sat on the chair and I had an exact same taste right of New York. And he created something called a motion encoding. So it was kind of in the year, the reason you get dizziness. If you use like a long uh, shutter speed, or if you move the camera too much, or if like a really bad quality and everything, so that kind of like a lot of this business uh, uh, problem. So what he did, he took the same content and wherever you feel the DC, you kind of like you know, because in here there is no time and zoom. If you look at it, so director has to direct your attention because you are watching all over. But still, if you look at the uh, land of the law of filmmaking. Actually, still happening in your front end. It's not like a very many percent of actually just happening. Maybe it's an obvious coming down from the other side. So this particular share company did an exceptional well job on the motion encoding. And said it's a content I watched like 30 minutes before, I felt a zero motion sickness. I think I'm positive that we support that. Thank you, thank you, sir. So soon we started yesterday, we have covered uh, many topics that are prior to most of in the other books, so we are confident that the next decade is surely zero to be made. At a time when the global macroeconomic situation is very increasingly challenged, with the framework, high oil price, decision, uh, inflation, what more. But we are fortunate in their minds isolated with our GDP at uh, 7% growth. When you look back uh, what's happening, in, which I covered yesterday, but for the sake of this uh, this meeting, we have a booming digital ecosystem supported by a lot of data posts, either with the virus uh, broadband management, availability of 5G, which was brought out recently, and the smartphone base that is expected to close 1 billion in another year. It's a matter of pride that the usage of our own road UPA has recently exceeded $150 billion worth of bad statement that happened in last month, that's in October. It is, and it is being used ever in every part of the country and the developed countries are seriously looking at our extent and they are they, they, they are being introduced this in their country, including US. So this is a big a big, big issue, especially for the media and entertainment industry. He has phenomenal potential and can severely become a hundred million dollar industry by the people. Right? Ministers here, we have said in the United States. There are tremendous growth opportunities in broadcasting, streaming, APGC, especially gaming, and other related sectors. Industry also highlights the support. Required from policy makers and regulators like anti-piracy, LPO decision from PRR, need for a light touch regulation for new and growing areas like uh, legacy industry, the modern industry, there's a lot of complication here, this thing, and also uh, MIB security is there. Don't uh, continue to one, one budget, uh, there is a regular content and there is news to come as well. You bring together the reception of the problem. Then give us a full freedom to entertain the people and to make a big problem of the system in India. Then also in the world care like, lag, organized like, there are many that it is obsolete. It has nothing to do with the modern content. It should be, be clear together and then revise the national progress policies and thus policy move on. There are a few essential prerequisites to make this $7 million ambition a reality. 
I must say that the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting is playing a, a crucial role in formulating policy recommendations and establishing the goals referred to in the significant benchmarks of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Piyushki, you, your advice in this summit is very important as we look up to you for your vision and support and to grow the industry, specifically promoting exports for the media and the next seven. That was one category to one, where we need policy and regulatory support. Two, where we need some facilitation and intervention support. JBTC is an 800 billion dollar industry company. And with a huge talent force available in the country, we do not even have one person share. It is a serious issue which we should discuss. This can, this can be another IT sector, and we can definitely target 5% market share of the global share in five years' time. That means that 40 billion dollar business with a potential to create 160,000. This is a huge, huge sector. And we have has reached a lot of issues in this direction and uh, and uh, is that enough to take this start the five years and the 40 billion business. And there is a lot of focus on MDC task force, setting up national center excellence, and our opportunity is substantial and we should evaluate how we can really fast track this and take advantage of this big fast growing center. Second one is an opportunity to make India a preferred location for global content production. We have everything here. This is an area where some intervention and facilitation can help to prepare the opportunity. With the beautiful and diverse uh, locations and landscapes, good infrastructure, high quality manpower, we have all the ingredients required to prepare this opportunity and to become the preferred destination for international film shows. While instances some sort of incentives have been announced for this is simple to talk clear as focus global market that India is the destination. Many of the countries are doing that. And we need a dedicated task force to study and provide end-to-end -end recommendations and making India the destination. Industry, we need to take inspiration from countries like the South Korea which I mentioned yesterday and create a content that appeals to global audiences. Which is possible and uh, uh, which I mentioned, Bollywood is passing through a very tough phase and they had to be even their content and the product to make it flow. I know I am assuring that we do something on this thing and we will make it a uh, global content production in India and uh, this is the model of the industry. But we need to figure out, the industry need to figure out solutions. And we assure you, sir, we will do it. CA already has an active dialogue going on with the Ministry on some of these topics, and I'm sure your support and intervention can make a fast track on these three points. Thank you once again. We look forward to your thoughts on this. Thank you. Uh, reports. The first is a CII PCG report on shaping the future of Indian tech. Okay. Okay. So,
the decline and the rise of the social media that, that is how the consumption of media now takes place. And within that also now there is a short video format which has become much more popular. In fact, I was surprised to learn there that the youngsters now refer to TikTok uh, to, uh, for searching uh, any, any piece of uh, information rather than Google. So TikTok has become more popular than Google as a search engine because short videos are available on any and everything. Now the issue is of credibility. For people of our age, the credibility of media is paramount and uh, in that context, that was the main topic of discussion there was the credibility in social media, how to achieve that and how to find the menace of fake news. So in that context, I think that is the major challenge which the, these summits and the, uh, the media organizations will also have to deliberate that if the viewer tastes are changing, the consumer tastes are changing towards short, short, shorter and shorter models and the speed at which these uh, media is coming, then the question of credibility, fake news and how to protect our people from such media. At the same time, I also there uh, was quite happy to share with the world that we in India and our are quite uh, working very closely with our media organizations to take forward the the uh, the programs of the government. For example, we managed to give deliver 2.1 billion doses of vaccine during the COVID. And it would not have been possible without the support of media, the entire media, whether it is social media, whether it is print media, whether it is TV media. In India, there was no vaccine hesitancy and everybody willingly went forward and took the COVID shots. Two plastics, so many entries that the media runs on its own and we are happy to collaborate with the media in this regard. As regards coming to the topic at hand that how to take media from a 24, 25 billion dollar industry to 100 billion dollar by 2030. We, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, are always there to support the media. Mr. Madhavan raised some issues and uh, we are always collaborating. We are actually, we see ourselves as partners of the industry, not as regulators. And whatever policies we bring about, whatever changes we bring about, they are always in consultation with the industry, with the benefit of the industry at its own, rather than anything else. Recently, the updated community guidelines have come out from the TV media, and we have tried to deal out many of the provisions so that the ease of business is there, more and more TV channels can be, can be, uh, can uh, be uplink from India, India becomes the very core hub, that is the guiding principle there, apart from easing out the compliance burden of the channels in India. Like the Kanpur and Sankhya Labs, they have launched something in the city of Bangalore, they want to do it something close to Delhi also in Noida or some other place. And I believe that it is quite successful and that is going to be the next big thing because once we start direct mobile broadcasting from the 20 crore TV households, it will reach to, there are 60, there are 60 crore uh, smartphones in the country, 80 crore broadband users. So the reach of the TV media will be much higher and I am sure that that will lead to a profusion of content and because in India the data cost also are amongst the cheapest in the world and people are used to watching everything on the mobile. We are also working on the, the issue of TRP ratings. The reverse path data, that pilot has also been successful. The report is now submitted and we will now take it forward on how to, on integrating more and more reverse path data because that was a major ground of everyone that the number of households where bath is taking the rating is much low, is very low and it should be increased. So once the RPD happens, I am sure that uh, TRP uh, will become uh, uh, will become will the, the set of data from which the TRP is uh, taken will become much more uh, large. <coughs> the national cap of the city, uh, the national cap on FM has been removed 
And uh, there are other issues which uh, FM radio channels have raised with us. We have raised that in the PII. The PII has told us that they will be coming out with consultation papers by the summer on many of the issues. And we will see big changes in how the FM is. Backbone uh, and the, the post production, for most of the Hollywood, the last, the last production. And uh, the slogan which we want to give is like it was Make in India. It has also been talked about for a long time. Well, that is also taking its final stages. We are taking the government approvals and we are trying up to CII and TT as an industry partner. And on the lines of Invest India, we will be creating this COE because Invest India under the leadership of the English Way is one of the biggest success stories of the country. And we are also partnering with Invest India under uh, for the Film Presentation Office of NBC. Where we want to uh, attract more and more foreign filmmakers to come to our country to shoot and also for uh, post production and animation and virtual reality for which we are back to. Today itself, I think we have the people from the Traditional Commission, we are going to have the Goa Film Festival also very shortly. And we are looking for more and more such types and opportunities to have. So that we create the India Pavilion, we have a big image, we have a big pavilion where others they will be let out space to others, and we would like all our industry to come as a group and show the strength of India as a united force where we can then showcase all our activities in one particular pavilion to the entire world. That will, I'm sure that will benefit the industry as well as the country as a whole. This is the first time we look forward to more and more industry participation in the future. So, with that, I would like to end and I would like to say that the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting is a partner, not a regulator, and we look forward to working with you from the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Mr. Purva Chandra, Secretary, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Mr. Madhuram from uh, Business Club and Chairman of CII National Committee on Media and Entertainment. Mr. Bilin Ghof, Vice Chairman. All the distinguished participants of this <coughs> big picture summit. Friends from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, my apologies for having made you wait, but we are in the midst of election fever, and you will appreciate that there is a lot of activity going on. And I was tied up in some other pressing meetings. My great gratitude to all of you for having allowed me or indulged in my getting late. This is a remarkable opportunity for India. But it will only be possible to cash if the entire industry <coughs> gets together and grabs the knowledge. I truly appreciate the very important role all of you have played uh, through the COVID period, I can't even imagine how we would go through COVID without the huge amount of entertainment that all of you have provided to us. The fact that television channels kept rolling, we got the news of what's happening. It's another matter that in the process, almost every anchor of television news became a COVID expert through that period. Sometimes I used to be amazed that. Uh, they would be questioning our doctors as if the anchor was the expert and the doctor was on the dock. But it was great that the entire country was able to remain engaged, connected and informed through one of the most trying periods that the country has gone. Your sector clearly is a sunrise sector, as Mr. Madhavan and Apurva Jirai mentioned. 
And the figures that I just saw, particularly through these books, and I think I'm carrying these books with me because quite a lot of information which probably we missed somewhere along the line. We've not focused as much on this sector as one should have. If we are less than 1% of the global market space on media and entertainment, and on the other hand, we pride ourselves in our Bollywood and Hollywood and all the various uh, film industry centers, we pride ourselves in all the wonderful work that is being done on OTT platforms, on the presentations that are being made. I think it's a matter of serious introspection. And I can assure you that uh, I will be talking to my colleague, Mr. Anurag Thakur, and together we'll get the different arms of the government to engage with your industry and see how we can plan some significant growth in this sector. I'm probably growing at 30%. When the base is very small, I think we can even become more ambitious and start looking for greater outcomes, particularly when we have a lot to leverage our technical skills, our talent to the young boys and girls, the fact that we have a digitally connected nation, very few nations in the world which have 4G through the length and breadth of the country, and it has already launched 5G, which over the next 18 or 24 months would have spread throughout the country, particularly in the areas which would be of interest to your industry. So there's huge building blocks which are available for your sector to cash in on, to grow on, and uh, I do believe we'll have to work together in the spirit of partnership between the private sector and the government. But I would suggest, Mr. Madhavan, the less the sector depends on the government. The more chances you, are, you have of significant success and growth. Now, case in point is the IT sector. The IT sector, I do not think, really looks up to government or is involved with government on a day-to-day -day basis for SOPs and <coughs> hand-holding, but has been able to find its niche markets both in India and through the world, through the sheer strength of our talent and our competitiveness and the quality of work that we present to or we offer to stakeholders across the world. We are well aware, as was mentioned earlier, that India is a large market itself. We have probably 900 million people connected on the net. Yesterday I was in a program where I was told the sale of television sets, particularly the LED television sets, is growing also very rapidly in the country. But I still believe we've not even reached the inflection point. We have a long way to go. We can expand the entire ecosystem. But I would think that it would need some out-of-the-box ideas that can only come from you. I, I, I suspect that if, first of all, you were to get your entire industry together, the fact of life is that even today, we are represented by a very small subset of this entire sector. The animation and visual effects or gaming and the comics or whatever, it's on the AAG, AVGC, different arms. I don't see that represented in this room before me today. And an organization like CII certainly can help play a role in getting all the various sectors together. I would also believe that it's important that we see where our value proposition really lies. It's not necessary we have to be able to do everything the best. But when I hear of the kind of budgets that are moving like Avatar, for example, I would think uh, we can do the same thing in India 
in a very, very cost competitive manner. And actually started becoming a content creator for the next year. Recently visited uh, your Sony headquarters in Los Angeles. And I do believe that if we are able to showcase the big Indian talent pool and the opportunities here, the world will notice and the world would like to engage more with it. Even for the export of value added products from India, technology products from India, content from India. And uh, I like your idea that we sit down together, we make our entire legal framework more contemporary. I was just told that some of the laws of violence and all go back maybe a hundred years or something. Uh, Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi has already said that we have to get out of the colonial mindset, move out of all these old traditional laws and engage with the world on modern terms. And uh, I do believe the Telecom Ministry of AT and IMB are working together to make the laws more contemporary. I'm sure they will engage with your industry also. And uh, together we all can come up with something which is truly facilitating growth in this sector and helps you in your day-to-day -day operations. Of course, uh, that's the soft power of India that has a potential to transform lives. It has the potential to add a lot of jobs. It has the potential to get the best creative skills out of our people. But I do believe that some form of self-regulation also within the industry, within the media and entertainment industry is called for. On the one hand, we talk of our culture, our rich tradition, our heritage, our family value systems. And on the other hand, some of what we see on television or some of what we see on the OTP platforms certainly is beyond what is ordinarily acceptable standards within the Indian cultural landscape. I, I wonder if in any of our families amongst all, and I see a lot of young children here also, whether they would use the kind of language that is sometimes reflected on some of these OTT shows and children and parents talking to each other in that language. It's something I don't think any of our children here would ever indulge. Like man, I don't know if it helps you sell your product any better. I suspect not. And while we welcome modern content, we welcome all the work that you're doing in presenting, uh, let's say, exciting or very catchy serials or very catchy content, I do believe that some form of self-regulation and some levels of decency in the presentation of India and Indian families and Indian culture is something where the captains of this industry should also be in a position to play. And some of the things, for example, would never be acceptable when it is shown in a movie. I don't see why that should be acceptable on an OTT platform. And then, if you don't self-regulate, there would be a clamor from society that then government will have to So I do believe it is important that everybody participates in an effort to make your industry more acceptable and really bring in value propositions. We are not at all against any humor, we are not at all against any of the uh, murder mysteries or whatever else. But I do believe that in the messaging, please do not totally give a message which is disconnected with the Indian gang. And I do think that uh, that will help the industry in its engagement with uh, the law also, 
and with new ideas to be able to help us. We can make that content if at all that's very much acceptable or wanted in international markets. But I do believe that uh, back home, some levels of uh, what is acceptable should be the norm, not the exception. We certainly want to bring new technology, new equipment which can help us make uh, the kind of films, the animation films, or the visual effects that are very much popular today. But I don't think it's only about money. The other day I was told in Bangalore that this recent movie, Kantar, was made for 16 or 18 crore and had a gross revenue which was 20 times that. While of course there are many big budget movies also that some do well, some don't do well. But I do believe that it's not only a question of money. We have a lot of talent in India. We have a lot of capabilities, creative skills. We have a large domestic market which is uh, in a way opening up new opportunities for economies of scale also. The fact that you, have, you can have such a large audience may not be easy anywhere else in the world. And I do believe that the immense popularity that our entertainment or the media sector has both in India and in the world, the opportunities are there. We will need to see whether what we need to do collectively and for that, I seriously believe that your entire industry, through the length and breadth of India, also needs to speak in one voice. That will give you strength. For example, you were mentioning to me just about some suggestions around uh, the taxation structure. Now, that will need a holistic pan India acceptance and can't be done only by engaging with the central government. A lot of it would be local. For example, the entire ecosystem of permissions for shooting and filming in India. It may include uh, the licenses for shooting, it may include shooting in planes or aeroplanes, it may include shooting on our beaches, it may include shooting in our maybe our monuments or our heritage sites, the air site and coal site. There's so many different possibilities. We are happy to engage with you and see how all of that can be made simpler, how we can provide a one single window platform for this to be uh, easier for both international films, shooters or international advertising filmmakers and for the Indian industry. And work towards a simplified framework, a less delimitating situation where the red carpet is genuinely opened out for both Indian and international artists. And then we can imagine that India's rising soft power can provide opportunity for the next generation. That will also mean some regulation on the end of the industry in terms of what social security is being done, paid or taken care of, how all the people engaged in this sector, whether they're getting proper wages, proper, uh, proper labor laws are followed, what's their long-term social firmament, how they're ensuring that they are taken care of in terms of healthcare or other things. I think it will have to be also that will have to be a part of any such engagement to make them an integral part of the success story of this set. There are of course certain issues which uh, are of concern also, for example, to what level and extent we would like to have gaming in this country. Are we willing and happy to have the next generation completely taken in by betting or by, by uh, engaging with money? on the various gaming platforms. That's another question that requires deep thought. And I think all of you well-meaning senior 
people in the industry will have to guide us. What is the right balance? How do we ensure that this does not lead to an addiction or does not spoil the social fundament of our society or the culture that we've inherited over the years? So it will be a great thing to have more engagement. It will be great to work together as partners in the progress of this industry. It will be wonderful if we can keep out of the controversies and focus more on positive outcomes. I don't know whether the controversy is something that you help sell a product or a film. I'm told that sometimes that is also the intention behind controversial subjects. But I would tend to believe that nobody will like any controversies. People would really like an organized growth and development of the industry. We on our part would like to support the industry in every which way we can. We have already increased the foreign direct investment limit to allow even 100% foreign ownership so that we can attract technology and attract uh, companies from around the world. I understand that we have to embrace innovation in the storytelling exercise or the way stories are told or communicated. I do believe that we still have a huge, huge market for Indian culture, we have a rich archive of historical relevance and importance for India. In fact, uh, I did see one of the recent, I have a movie buff incidentally, so I keep uh, engaged with your sector at least as a user and uh, hopefully I will get some uh, revenue. The PVRs and the multiplexes are pretty expensive. <laughs> but uh, I do want to see many more of these multiplexes across the land. And I'm given to understand that some of our neighboring countries have maybe 10x or 20x the number of multiplexes that we have in India. Whereas we are a country which always was known to be a uh, movie uh, lover. So I do believe that uh, there's a lot of potential, a lot of new markets that we are not yet explored. We can diversify into new markets. We can create better ecosystems, providing new canvas for your creativity to flourish. We can become the quality content producer for the world. And our Indian talent truly has that potential. We need to have more skill development courses or more educational courses to further bring in more talent or hold the skills of our young boys and girls to be able to come out with international class of content. And I'm very sure that as was said earlier by Purva, we need to create an India for the world and towards the end, we would love to see what the dedicated task force comes up with. I will also study the reports of BCG and KPMG that have been presented today and see how we can, as government, work with you, maybe a small group uh, of well-meaning captains of your industry can sit down with the telecom minister, IND minister and us, and we can collectively work with the state governments, work with all the stakeholders throughout the country and see how this industry can become one of the fastest growing industries in the country, how this soft power of India can reflect India's strengths and rich culture to the rest of the world, how this can become a big provider of opportunities to be jobs, to be creative talent, to be a new startup, I think there's huge potential that we can all together leverage. And I assure you, full support from the government in your endeavors to take this industry fast forward on a mission. My compliments to CII for this big picture summit. I wish all of you well in the years to come. Thank you very much. Mr. Approach, I'm absentia. Other one, friends.
Piyush ji, thank you very much. The ballot box is here. Thank you for coming to cast your vote. It's election time and you have cast your vote here and it's up to us now to honor the manifesto that we have presented to you. So that's us for starters. Uh, I think you echoed the vision of the Prime Minister who also talked about the soft power and what we can do and I think we're on the way to doing that. But soft power requires hard decisions and we touched upon that as well. The other point that I'd like to mention is that the CII Committee for Media and Entertainment, which has seven sectors, has never before had a consternation of the leaders from the whole industry. So in one place you can actually talk to all of us at the same time. And the most important thing is you mentioned movies like Avatar. Sir, may I please tell you, we make 30 movies in India for Hollywood at budgets that are equal to or larger than Avatar. And a significant portion of that is done in India already, but we haven't finished, we haven't got started yet. Thank you, sir. I would also like to tell you that, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Akuma Chakra and the MID working now interministerially, which I think is a big change from before. Five ministries, seven of us from industry, many other stakeholders from, from, from the government, NFDC, et cetera, the media and the skills council. We've never before created a policy. We met every Friday morning for two hours and the policy got done in three and a half months. I think we need that kind of insight and the partnership to go forward in many of the other areas. I'd like to also mention that if we look at uh, the 11th Big Picture Summit, 55% of the revenues in our industry when we did the first summit no longer exist as products or services in our industry. And that's the pace of change that we need. Then you have equipment, you have diet, and you have many other things that need to be, champions need to be fed. We had a fantastic meeting at your ministry. In fact, uh, I was in a room that had your name all over it. Unfortunately, you were not there. But we got the champion sectors together. There's an agenda, sir, for your consideration. And I do believe that that agenda and that action plan can really be actually catapult us into a very large area. Like the fast food restaurants, the combo is in your hands. <coughs> because our industry gives you foreign exchange. It gives you jobs. We are 180,000 people short per year in our industry, just in ADGC. There, we need that kind of a combination of, of everything that can be delivered at one go. And it's in our hands to do that. And I think your words today are very encouraging to make that happen. Finally, while we say that industry can do things without the government, we do need from you uh, a prime company. And the prime company is market access. We are an infrastructure industry. There is no industry in this country. Studios that are producing visual effects and animation sometimes are more computing firepower than ISO. And this has to be recognized, and that's why we are creating centers of excellence. So small and medium companies that can't afford that infrastructure can actually come and avail of that. And finally, you talked about the fact that yes, we are in tough times, but we are here because it is better to light the candle than to curse the darkness. So thank you very much for that. Very well. <laughs> As a token of our appreciation. Thank you so much. I told the advertising council, I am the only girl. I am the only girl. I am the only girl. I Discuss this grave problem because today it is not only a threat to the G.